Okay. Let's turn down this music just a tad for you guys. Um, just waiting to see myself on the screen so that I know I'm corporeal. Yunski, how you doing, man? Uh, um, oh, I can hear myself. That's not good. Okay, yeah, I'm doing great. Um, just got up today. Um, put on some nice summer makeup, which was fun. I don't usually do that. Like, I really want to be one of those bi bitches, you know, like those summery makeup bitches. And like, so I was like, today is the day. And then I went out for lunch with my sister. So it was like a very lady who lunches, like a white woman lady who lunches day. Which is something I wish for all of you, is to have a white woman lady who lunches day. Um, I am saying this. Oh my God, there's a stain on my shirt. Fuck. That's not very lady who lunches. Um, so, Leave Britney Alone is out. I don't know if you guys have seen it yet, but it's on this channel. Please do give it a like. I'm very excited about it because it was my first self-direct. It was honestly not that stressful to film it or anything. I mean, it was stressful in that normal way, but getting it out was a little stressful for me. Um, so, so happy that it's finally out. I feel like I should be closer to you guys. Let me just tuck myself in here. Lee Brittany Lang was amazing. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm really glad you enjoyed it, guys. Um, that's awesome. New music for the next iPhone 13 ad. Okay, so I was just laughing earlier because I've never seen this before, but just in my suggested on this channel, which makes sense because it's my channel, um, there was this. Wait, can you see my screen? No, why is it black? The fuck? The fuck? Hmm. The fuck is happening? Ah, oh, here we go. Oh, it's tiny. <laughs> okay. Making you bigger. Okay, so on my screen just now, I see Vic. Why are you so little? Okay, that'll do. Um, cool. On my screen just now, I see this. One hour of iPhone 12 trailer music. Um, <laughs> With 36,000 views, I didn't even know it existed. Um, so I guess someone really, really liked for this. Thank you to Flying Pig. Um, great name. When pigs fly. You know. Um, everything just clicks. Um, so this is nice. I'm not your daughter, not quite what you ordered. I can relate to this, but I'm a boy. I'm glad. It's a song for all. It's feel your feminine energy. But yeah, it's cute. I like this. Yeah. Ah, uh, this person feels like it's a torture method. There's always one. But that's okay. Because we're hitting them on both ends. Haters and lovers. All together. One hour of up and 12 trays of music. Eat them apples. So that's nice. I'm glad that someone is enjoying it that much. Um, oh, that's Splice. We don't need that right now. Unless you guys want some fun sound effects. Um, let me get back to my big old head. That's me, big head boy. Okay. So, yeah. That was pretty funny. <laughs> big fan of that. Fun game of YT. Big fan. Love your songs. Awesome. I'm glad you love my songs. Hello, Juan. I was on FIFA 20, and I'm glad you enjoyed me being on FIFA 20. Um, that's awesome. That makes me happy. Um, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, Eat Them Apples is amazing. Thanks to you. They sold a lot of iPhones. Yes, they did. They gave me one. Oh my god, guys. Speaking of which, I had a really stressful few, la like, days the other day because someone stole my my phone. Someone stole my iPhone 12. Um, I was on the street, um, and they just rolled up to me on a moped and just grabbed it out of my hands while I was at the bus stop. Um, and I like stood up and I was like screaming swear words at them because I'm a feisty motherfucker and they really pissed me off. Um, and then I like kicked the bus stop. It was very dramatic. <laughs> uh, I was just really pissed off because, um, 
my life is my phone, like I have to work for my phone, so that fucking sucked. Watch out for moped fees if you're in London. I don't know if it, what it's like everywhere else, but like moped f- fees are real. The stupidest thing about it was like, usually I'm super wary of like keeping my phone out near big crossroads or like near places where mopeds can run up. And I was literally thinking about it. I put my phone in my pocket because I was like, fuck it, I don't want to get it stolen while I was at the traffic light. And then I take it out again at the bus stop. So this motherfucker like just rode off with my shit. He logged into my Instagram, he was in Essex. I was like, I could get this motherfucker right now, but I don't really want to. Um, So yeah, my phone got stolen, but uh, I have another phone that was given to me by Apple. So that's fucking awesome. So I'm using that phone. It was horrible. It sucked. It really sucked. So I have a really itchy nose today. I think it's hay fever. Um, It's incredibly sunny outside today, guys. Like dumb sunny. Um, which it's been like grey as fuck in London. I love what you've done. Thank you, Painting Walls. I think I love what I've done too, but I am my biggest critic. (laughs) Are you able to share what the experience of Apple using your music? What were the steps? Okay, so they emailed me. Um, and they were like, hey bitch, but like in a more professional manner. You know, we want to use your song, maybe for an Apple advert. And I was like, okay, that's not real because you get sent a lot of like, um, sync emails and it's like kind of a oh we want to do this but we're considering it so i was like i don't want to think this is real because if it isn't like i'll cry so for like months i didn't really think about it like i filmed a little bit of that first little reel that i posted on instagram basically just being like ah like i may have got an apple advert and then like months later they were like yeah you got it and then they were like this blew my fucking mind i thought it was going to be just for like the uk or spain or something and they were like yeah it's global um And that was the best thing that could have happened to me this year, honestly, because obviously with lockdown, like I can't tour, I can't do a lot of things. So um, yeah, it just really like saved my ass. Um, And also like, it's kind of perfect. And I got to sneak in a super feminist sort of like anti-misogynistic religion song into a global advert, which was dope. (laughs) I loved that. Um, And uh, that was really fun because I had a lot of girls in religious families message me about that and be like yeah that really helped me sort of either like break away from the more misogynistic parts of their religion or whatever or like stuff like that which is kind of uh what the song is about is it's rewriting your own stories to be more positive you know it, i mean eve M. apples is about eve and it's about the idea that she's just someone who wanted knowledge you know she wants to gain the knowledge she wants to eat the apple so um which to use the most phone or laptop probably phone but then when i'm editing my laptop as well but my phone honestly i'm too addicted to my phone i've I, I'm, I'm i'm trying to do this thing now where i don't know what you guys think of this but like when i'm watching tv i'm trying to turn it off or when i'm hanging out with friends or going on a night out i'm trying to turn it off because i spend so much of my time being like i want to make content and it just burns me out when i'm like not doing shit so i want to like just use my phone less and more productively because fuck using it all the time you know so yeah i use my phone the most but i want to use it less i want to use my laptop more because i do more creative and fun things on my laptop i make music on my laptop i um edit videos on my laptop i game on my laptop uh which i guess isn't creative but it feels creative to me and i stream on my laptop and i love streaming i've got fucking stains on my fucking trousers bollocks Props for you to make me onto a global stage. Honestly, yeah, it was awesome. I've had a lot of people be like, well, not a lot of people. I've had a couple of people on Twitter be like, you were on an iPhone ever, so now you're like, not a real artist anymore. And I'm just like, bitch, I gotta eat. I gotta eat and I gotta live. So like, unless you want me to live, you know, in a shack um, and make all my music from a shack to be more authentic, like, well, if that's the way you feel about your favorite artists, then kind of fuck you. <laughs> you know, like if you really want your artists to be unable to eat, to um be more authentic you're kind of an asshole maybe you don't mean to be an asshole but you're kind of an asshole mm. what a break oh, god that's good boy you've always got to love earth juice guys hi from france hi lindex nice to see you again thanks for coming back to the channel much appreciated um i kind of get why you were hesitant when apple first emailed you oh yeah i get a lot of i, I got a samsung advert email the other day for a phone for a different song that isn't out yet and they, they never got back to me so like it does happen a lot <laughs> so it was really really a surprise that it actually went through what phone do you have 
iPhone 12. Um, I got given it for free by Apple. Uh, which I didn't start using till now, which is good because my other phone just got stolen. Um, so really happy about that. <laughs> um, yeah, so that really did suck. Um, big win. Yeah, that was cool. So have you guys seen the Britney video yet? Tell us about this new song, Leave Britney Alone. Give us the MTV S scoop scoop lol. Um, thanks Clyde for that segue, that wonderful segue. Yeah, so I made this song, Leave Britney Alone, with my friend Zach, who's in the band Fiddler and is now going off to make his own solo stuff. And it's his verse you hear in the bridge. Um, I'm gonna drop his Insta in the chat. Um, go follow him if you don't. He is really an amazing artist and I think everything he's going to release is going to be Amazing, like just really successful. Um, because he's just got, he does a lot of punk stuff in Fiddler, but he has a much broader range than just, um, just the band. He's he's got his own shit going on. It's really cool. So yeah, I wrote this song with Zach Harper. That's his Instagram. Um. So yeah, it just came about, like, in my head when I first wrote it actually, like, I was kind of picturing Kanye West, like, or just like any big celebrity that's got mental health issues, just like, while I was singing it, I was imagining them like coming out of the house in the morning, kind of 2000 style, like, perhaps taking pictures of them, they get in a car, they're drunk, and they just go on this like crazy DUI, like, quest, and that's kind of what the song is about, it's like, how, what pushes them to that point, and sort of a way of looking more at like a, a meta way of looking at why we push people to this point how does it why do we do it what does it make us feel about ourselves why do we prop up entertainers to knock them down why is that a part of being an entertainer or an influencer um and it was kind of based on like this um it was a very very dark video it was based on this like tmz video of anna nicole who's like a model from the 90s who married a very old man. Um, and that's how she got really famous because people were just like, oh my God, gold digger. And she became this like very American gold digger stereotype um, kind of person because she married this billionaire. Um, okay, I'll sh you will have seen the picture of her in a wedding dress with him. It's, it's a very commonly shared like, Pinterest and uh, photo and stuff. I'll show you. So this is Anna Nicole um, with her very much nearly in the grave husband. And of course she made headlines and became very famous. She also modeled for like s fucking guest jeans and did this huge campaign with them and became uh, big off of that. Anyway, that was her like high, high point in her career. And then her low point was sort of, she basically gained weight and everyone in the 2000s was not nice about you gaining weight. So the minute she gained weight, everyone loved that because it was like, wow, like, she's, you know, so fat, like, fuck her for being pretty and now being fat. So it was kind of, like, awful. Basically, everyone's envy and vitriol at her richness and her her beauty kind of collapsed her mental state. And um, there's this TMZ video of her in the same exact makeup that I'm wearing um, in the video. And, um... This, her boyfriend's filming her basically to sell it to TMZ, sell this video of her. And um, this, it, it was just fucked up. And it made a big impact on me the first time I saw it as a teenager. I think, I think I saw it on YouTube. It made a big impact on me because I was like, damn, you get rich and successful and like people just take the piss. Um, and I think for me, like I said, it's quite a dark video. <laughs> um, but for me, this really, really, him doing this in, a, in an artistic sense um, was incredibly matter to me because obviously um, she's an entertainer and a performer. All she does is perform in the sense of like being a personality. So her being in clown makeup at her lowest moment, um, being filmed by someone who's supposed to care for her, who's going to put it on TMZ, to me artistically was a perfect sort of display of like what we do to rich and successful women, um, what we do to women, maybe even in our own personal lives with mental health issues, is we set them up to look, to play the fool, um, 
which is a role they'll accept willingly if they're still going to be loved. And then we use it to either take their money or their power. So I found this whole concept like super sad, <laughs> but super interesting. Um, so I wanted to like play off of some of my my worst fears basically when it came to watching these women on TMZ and stuff when you're younger or women in Heat magazine with the circle of shame and sort of play into like I really wanted to give people their own like shit back to them like look at it from a more personal and um empathetic perspective by using a, a sort of level of shock value and I, I think that's what I managed to do <laughs> um you know um, the video is sick, gave up Dark Knight Joker vibes. You know what's funny? It's like, that wasn't intentional, but like, it does play in well to this idea of a female Joker. Like, it's definitely got like a sort of per person who's pushed to the edge quality um, about it, which, you know, is, is very female Joker energy, um, which I didn't really realize until I started doing it. Um, I would say that it was, yeah, it was just, I, I, at first I didn't want to be in it, but I figured it would be better to be in it. Um, we'll watch it in a second. We'll watch it in a sec. Um, obviously I used, the way it ties into Britney is kind of, well Britney is like the biggest sort of emblem and, and symbol of a woman with mental health issues in today's modern media who has like their power taken away, right? I mean like she can't use an iPhone, she can't marry who she wants to marry. And I don't know if you guys knew this but Britney's conservatorship is not over, it just got handed over to a different company. So Britney still has all the same rights that she had taken away from her, taken away from her. It's just instead of her dad being in control of it, it's some random lady and her husband who own all of her money and a business and estate and control her entire life. Um, and they're a company that does that for like different people, like handles conservatorships, which is like, I don't think there should be a company that just like hands control of like people with mental health issues to take all their money. I mean, you control all their, their finances. So there's no way to be impartial or in that situation. Um, so yeah, if, if you guys weren't aware, like Britney's conservatorship is still going on and um, it's just changed hands. Um, and I don't think that Britney's sane. I want to make that clear. Like, I don't think that years and years of abuse by our own you know, family is going to make you sane and, and so much time in the public eye. But I think it's unfair that we let Charlie Sheen walk around with knives and cocaine and you know think it's hilarious when he says he's like winning and then like let kanye west you know say that slavery is a choice and also then cry and, and try to be president for fuck's sake when he's clearly got really bad bipolar you know those two guys are yeah they're going around the world doing weird shit but like they're not actually hurting anyone so it just annoys me that britney's not allowed to have her own money um clyde says this topic is the same reason why i'm a diehard fan of amy winehouse because a similar situation happened to her it's crazy what hollywood does to these women and i don't think it's just hollywood you have to remember it's these women's families and like you know it's it's it, it's actually like more of a systemic overarching problem when you look at amy and britney and stuff it's happening to women who aren't famous like there are women who aren't famous who may be rich or maybe just have a partner who really really doesn't want to let them be in control of their own life who are under conservatorships too um or are being sectioned or are being you know ba basically since the dawn of psychiatry like psychi psychology even women have been um sectioned and like stuff for like nothing um and i have this little um list of reasons that women were put into asylums in the 1800s and it's fucking ridiculous and I thought I'd share it with you all because this gives you an idea of like women and psychology when it comes to like men and men using psychology to control women so this was around when psychology was becoming a thing and asylums were becoming a thing so it's really early on um but some of the reasons they're kind of funny in a fucked up kind of way um because they're just utterly ridiculous so we have here 
list of reasons for a mission. Impertinence and business trouble. I mean, you could definitely say that that's something they tried to get Britney on. Kicked in the head by a horse. I mean, that one's kind of fair. Imaginary female trouble. Immoral life. <laughs> Jealousy and religion. <laughs> there was big religious movements that were to do with, like, sort of before modern day feminism, like, sort of, you know, with, with involved women at the time. Marriage of son. <laughs> Masturbation and syphilis. Masturbation for 30 years. <laughs> That's such a specific amount of time! The fuck? <laughs> Um, taking the pill. <laughs> uh, novel reading. I would definitely have been put in the asylum for novel reading. Tobacco and masturbation at once. Kinky motherfucker. Um, religious enthusiasm. Um, bad whiskey. Bad whiskey. What the fuck does that even mean? So these are reasons that women got put in asylums in like the 1800s. Um, vicious vices. <laughs> fuck. I mean, some of them are so funny. Um, gathering in the head. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Hard study. I guess she was too busy learning. Yeah, it's just dumb. So my point is, is like, since psychology has been a thing, women have been being put into mental asylums because of it and that's you know we need to be aware of that bad whiskey like it's very funny but you it's only funny because you have to laugh um you know these kind of things are still happening we just find different ways to word it and i think with britney it's the same thing it's like we don't actually have a good faith reason why britney should not be allowed to get married or have an iphone except that you know she shouldn't be in control of her own business and money. It's like, well, of course you don't want her to be in control of her own business and money. And, and, and like I said, for anyone new who's just watching Britney still in her conservatorship, her dad just isn't the one who's owning all her money and controlling her. It's a different couple. Which is fucked up! Yeah. But they're just like, mad dumb. We need a lyrics video. That's very possible. I can see if I can get someone to put something together. Um... But I can sort of go through the lyrics with you after we've watched it. Um, but yeah, just the reasons that women got put in the silence back in the day are fucking dumb and it scares me because I don't think people realize that like, it's not like all of a sudden these days we're still control, you know, we're controlling women and putting them in uh, bad situations because of their mental health. Like since psychology has been a thing, it has been a lot about that. So a lot of the theories and facts like um, penis envy, like by Freud and stuff, it's like, they're very misogynistic tropes and ideas that favour the man, favour the husband, you know. I mean, in the late 1900s, masturbation stopped being a reason to put women in asylums and started being like something that you did to calm women down. Because often a lot of the reasons that women were having mental health issues because because they'd been with a guy for 20 years and they had like six kids with them and they'd never made them come, which would make anyone kind of depressed. Why is there like 700 of me? Um. <laughs> the fuck? Oh my god, hi Daya. Modern witch hunt. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's a witch hunt. I think... I mean, it's comparable. It's comparable, but no one's being burned alive. I think that's really important. Like, I don't, I'm not keen on the whole phrase of witch hunt, because, like, as far as I know, in the US and UK and stuff, these women are not actually being, like... They're still dying because of this shit, but, like, they're not actually, like, being burned at the stake, so I don't like to use that comparison too much. Why am I- oh, there are a thousand of me. There we go. Um. <laughs> Hysteria was what they would diagnose women with uh, who were defiant. It's messed up. Yeah, and I think it's important to remember that because I think a lot of women don't know that and if you don't know that you can get confused about what one. Um. Susie Seption, hopefully. Uh, we're all well today, by the way. How's everyone's day going? Um, my day's been pretty good. I've just gone outside for lunch because it's boiling. Honestly, I've been a little stressed about releasing this video and the build up to it has been intense. I also wanted to say like, I mean, let's, we're gonna watch it in a sec. So I'd say once we're at 15 viewers, we'll like, we'll start. 
Mm. And then we'll kind of go through like how you go about, I don't know if any of you guys are ever interested in directing your own videos, whether it be for smaller projects or music videos and stuff, but I'm totally willing to answer any questions that you might have or queries about that as well, because it is an exciting and fun thing to do, especially if you're in your early twenties and you have a lot of time. Um, you know, so I'm here to like answer questions about that too. Sorry, I have the worst hay fever. Oh. Look how flat my nose goes. I have like a no cartilage. It's fucked. It's like Squidward, bro. I think it's some dark shadow figures pulling the strings in these artists' lives. You have to understand these artists have a lot of followers. Followers equals power and powers at be. I think it's really important to just have your wits about you, man. Like, I feel really lucky with my management because I just have a good philosophy and attitude. But I still say there's no one that I completely trust with my money and time. Um. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm watching my playback at the same time as talking and I just saw myself do that flat nose thing and I'm like, why? <laughs> Yeah, let's get into this beach. Let's get into this beach. Um, it happened to Marilyn Monroe as well. The list is endless, bro. The list is fucking endless about, you know, and I think we need to remember something as well, right? There's a whole, one of the big things is a Madonna whore complex that goes on um, with these women, which is kind of dying out now because women are sort of fighting against it, I'd say like, um, but what a Madonna Hall complex kind of used to be was what Freud used to describe it was, was this idea that um, in a man's eyes, a woman could either be um, the object of his desire, which therefore meant that she had to be slutty and a whore and then he could never really like feel for her. Or he had to be, she had to be, you know, perfectly innocent, in which case he couldn't ruin that or wreck that by fucking her. So yeah, that concept is inherently misogynistic and flawed. Like. You have to remember Freud was a massive cokehead and um, uh, he used to like do coke before he would do all his speeches and shit and like I think that it's a really weird construct but what I will say is it does, it is emblematic of Britney's career, this idea that you know either she's like a saint or a sinner and I have a lot of issues with the Free Britney movement because of this, because, you know, I watch a lot of the videos from the Free Britney movement and I've been thinking a lot about it lately, like, am I part of the Free Britney movement? I want Britney Spears to be free. She isn't free yet. Um, but I don't want to go over all of her old paparazzi photos and, like, uh, get into that and dissect all her worst moments and stuff because that's the same thing that the people who vilify her do. Um, you know, and I just think that they're kind of as bad as the the sort of paparazzi at this point, you know. I mean, I see people um, on my TikTok all the time going over all of the Free Britney movement and it's just like, you know, showing pictures of her from 2008 or whatever and stuff like, um, in her worst moments and be like, this is why we need to help her. And I'm like, yeah, but like, you're doing this because it's getting you a following. Like, you're not doing this because, I mean, obviously you do want Britney to be free and you're passionate about it, but like, also you've made your career off of like, the same shit that people have always been doing to her. And that's, that's the problem with the Madonna war complex that goes along with a lot of these women. And then, you know, there is a lot of politics in the mainstream media, Mr. Dan. I think that's a really good point to make. And I think that, one thing we ignore with the McDonald Hall complex is also the male version of that, which is the kind of white knight slash like lusting beast complex, I would call it, which is this whole idea that, um, you know, men can either be a savior to women, which means that they therefore like can't, you know, touch her or like be with her because that would be like defiling her or they can be like, you know, a bad person, a rapist, a, you know, lusting dude with no control over his urges. So they're either a savior or they're like a demon. <laughs> and I think that this kind of idea of being like a white knight or a beast can really like fuck with a guy's head. Or uh, same with as being like a Madonna 
like a virginal Madonna or a whore can fuck with a woman's head. And these things are bullshit. I think that's the thing we need to remember is like, Britney is not a perfect individual. She's not a um, complete and utter saint who's been completely wrong. Like she has mental health issues and she's not a complete and utter evil sinner. She's a lady who wants to be able to, you know, who has some bad mental health and a difficult life, who wants to be able to use an iPhone and get married um, and um, spend her own money that she earned in her business. And I think we need to remember that. It's like, they're just people. These people are people. And they have low moments and high moments. And the only difference is, is that we see them both and judge accordingly. And it's the same with guys. Like, they're not saviors who are supposed to rise to your rescue or like demons who are, you know, other men need to protect you from. They're just dudes and like, you know, there's many, many guys who are neither of those things. And we just need to get rid of these outdated psychology con like concepts because they're like, you know, we're taking them as gospel, but they're really a product of their time. And sometimes that are outdated stereotypes. So that's how I feel about that. I know that was a little bit of a long-winded statement, but I, I think you can see how my mind's been processing things lately. Um, which is something I, that's what I try and do with my art, is to sort of get across what my mind's been processing lately. Thinking a lot about Miley Cyrus, says Hayne, who I feel recently has been able to make music she really likes because of the weird power dynamic with the parents managing her. So Miley's an interesting one because Britney Spears actually mentioned Miley in her court statement she said you know i was born basically i'm i'm sort of paraphrasing here or whatever you call it um but like she sort of said i was born at a time where like i had to be the pretty perfect saint you know christian saint i'm not like miley cyrus who gets to sort of parade around smoking weed and then getting and you know oh she's just a kid like there wasn't that in her time which i think is very true but i think also in light of the whole thing that happened with britney spears the marketing around her there was different values and i have a quote from disney marketing execs about this actually which is really interesting um let me see if i can find it i made a little document to talk about all this stuff because jesus christ did i do a lot of research and jesus christ was it depressing <laughs> um but it was also really interesting i read this book called kinder culture which is all about the beginning of this idea of marketing an idealized childhood by via the tv which wasn't really a thing until the last like 50 60 years so it's a very new thing um yeah this is what my, like britney spears had to say about miley cyrus um that she's talking about the disney managers their cool tactics working for miley cyrus as she smokes joints on stage at the vmas nothing has ever been done to this generation for doing wrong things which obviously is untrue but i can see why she feels that way but my precious body has worked for my dad for the past 13 years trying to be so good and pretty so perfect because he works me so hard when i do everything i'm told so i think that's really interesting um because you know Miley Cyrus actually said that she felt like she wasn't allowed to look like a child on the Disney Channel and she had a coat of armor and was traveling worldwide at 12 and you know um she 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 had a schedule at 12 that had about 30 minutes for a nap and like th 20 minutes for lunch in between stuff so you know she didn't have an easy time but I found this really good quote about Miley I'm just trying to find it This, this was a quote from the Kinder Culture book, which says, um, according to a New York Times article, for many people, but especially for those parents unnerved by the spectacle of the Spears family, Miley Cyrus represents a positive role model for millions of girls still figuring out how they feel about boys. So Disney knows that. They've taken... From, so it's really interesting that Britney mentions Miley in her court speech because she's clearly very aware that they're the intrinsically linked characters in this marketing of childhood to little girls all around the world um which is insidious as fuck like i remember watching hannah montana which i didn't even really enjoy that much can i just say it just wasn't really my style of humor but i still watched it because it was on disney channel and i knew that i could talk to other girls about hannah montana 
which is kind of part and parcel of the whole Disney thing. And um, my whole idea of what being a music star was, I always wanted to do music, right? But in my head, I wanted to do like Jimi Hendrix, Hotel Chelsea, like, um, you know, fuck up the stage, have really interesting beat poet conversations with motherfuckers kind of thing. And watching Hannah Montana changed that idea in my head from like that to like having no autonomy, having to wear disguises to be able to be famous, like your dad being the one who's sort of like in control of your, like it just, at what it meant you had to be pretty, you had to be the coolest, most adult teenager ever. Like it put all of these ideas in my head that had nothing to do with the job that I do now. And um, I like to examine shit like that. I like to examine shit like that. So now, okay, let's get on with um, watching the video. On that note, I feel like I've given you guys enough backstory. So if y'all are ready, I'm ready. Um, let's jump right into this thing. So this was my first self-direct and it was, let me just turn off. It was uh, really good because I had a great team of producers around me and I worked with my friend Donnie, who's such an amazing DOP, which I'll, I'll drop his link in the chat afterwards, which means the director of photography. Um, so this be it. We're gonna watch it together. I hope you guys are ready. I'm just bringing up my YouTube live. Uh, let me just get you guys in chat so I can see what you're saying. Okay. Here we go. So I edited it as well, which was really fun actually. Such acting. So that's Zach. No audio. The fuck? Hold up. Start from the beginning. Playing now, yeah? Yeah. 
This bit was really fun to just jam. You know when you're in a shit mood and you just jam to the car radio? Bro, that's my little tag. If you ever see that in different cities around the world, that's me. Um, so yeah, I don't know what you guys think. Fuck you. No, we're not doing that right now. Um, but yeah, so that's the video. It was a self-direct, so I kind of want to go through it. On the day, I had my friend Sida do my makeup, who's fucking sick, and she did it pretty much exactly like that in a cool makeup, um, but with a little bit of sort of more clown eyes, which was kind of cool. Um, getting into the role for this was the first time I would say I ever actually tried to act in a music video, and it was really tough because I had to do a lot of things with my body to make me feel anxious and upset so I was like hunching my shoulders and basically like causing myself to panic to get these shots which was super interesting um and it's the first time I've sort of hacked the ability to act if you get what I mean thank you Hein thank you Mr. Dan and thank you Clay I'm glad you like it um but yeah I feel like so this was kind of the beginning it was kind of the idea of you know the boyfriend filming me you know you like an x-ray every single bone and muscle close up on the mouth for the bone and muscle Look at me being able to cry on camera. I had to sit for so long with my eyes open like this. Just like, trying to get them to water. <laughs> um, which was funny. Um, well, at the time it was kind of stress, but. The screaming? I was screaming real loud. That was really fun to edit though, those little cuts. Okay, chill, 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 chill out. Oh, we're on 4%. Okay. <sighs> Jesus. Sorry guys, my charge has been kind of fucking up lately. Ah, <sighs> damn it. Yeah, but um... Don't do this right now. Why you do? Hello, good, thank you. Yeah, it was a lot to uh... To do. Damn, dude. Props to the makeup artist, looks unique. She's amazing. Like, I wasn't even using Cider's full skill to do that shit. Like, she is fucking boss at this kind of thing. Um. Jesus Christ, we're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna crash, guys. This is so annoying because I'm only on 4%. Um. But please, if you did enjoy it, please go hit the like button on it because it. I want it to obviously as many people to see it as possible, um, and that would really help. Do that, so please do. Um, I don't know how long we're gonna be on here, so I'm just gonna say this now. I'm gonna be on Twitch later on as well. Um, hopefully, I won't have my computer dying. Um, I'm hoping you guys can still hear me right now. Can you guys still see slash 